What is going on, people of YouTube? My name is Kurt Yo, and I'm doing this again. I did the intro before, did a bit of the recording, interrupted, didn't work out. Starting again, we have a review for you today. Now, the review is basically where I look at teams, see how they've done, pick the best team out from the weekend. Now, obviously, I'm going to show you how I did. I'm going to do that quickly from now on. 51 points, did all right. Only one person in the dream team, but did okay. Nonetheless, got green arrows in every single league I am in, which is fantastic to see. We move on to the dream team. When it loads, there we go. And we see that 118 points is not that big of a dream team, to be honest. You know, if you compare it you know, to last week's dream team, we're looking at you know 151 points, huge week for players like Wijnaldum. You're looking at 17, uh, 17 points, I think it was for Kane this week. That week, you had uh, Sterling more, Wijnaldum more, you know Bonnie and uh, Vardy close by. You look at this week, game week 10. There wasn't that many above 10 at all. You know, you've got the keeper, you got two there, you got one there, and you got two there. It's not that much, not high scoring week, but. We can take a look at the best performances from this week. Starting off with the goalkeepers, obviously, you know, Boaz Myhill was in there. He's a top scorer in general, and round score, he was up there. In at eight points, bonus point of one. Clean sheet, few saves as well. Away against Norwich, pick up a 1-0 win for West Brom. Not a bad week indeed for them. Also, we have at the top, top, Costal Pantilimon, who, quite frankly, for me, if he wasn't in the Sunderland goal and someone else was in there, Sunderland would not have come out of a clean sheet. He was fantastic in the game. Probably deserved three bonus points for me, but of course, bonus point system works how it does. But if going by man of the match standard, definitely Costel Pantilimon was up there. And then also we have Kasper Schmeichel. For simple reason, they finally got a clean sheet. He picked himself up a few saves as well. And the reason I've chosen him ahead of a few other keepers, because there are other keepers up there. Merely he's on seven, others are on six. So you're looking at people like Hart, like De Gea, like Gomez, who are the only three others that got clean sheets. The reason he had pipped all of them is because, you know, home against Crystal Palace. Palace have been a fantastic team away from home um, recently, or in the, the Pardew reign. And to manage to get a clean sheet against them and make it their first clean sheet, you know, something of fantastic performance. So props to them. Moving on to the defenders, obviously we have three from each, um, or three top scorers. Of course we start off with, you know, Billy Jones. He's picked himself up three bonus points. A goal scored in a huge, huge match for Sunderland that could change their season. And also picked himself up a clean sheet. Very rarely you see all of that together. But that all together makes you 15 points. And the last defender to do that, stats-wise, and also a little bit of history, Kurt Zuma, who didn't really have a good week this week. Um, but he picked himself up 15 points. A huge um, point tally for Billy Jones, considering... Considering how he started, I mean, looking at you thinking, hmm, yeah, not too good indeed. He's now only 22 points, so he's going to pick up 7 points before that game, which is not bad. Um, you know, considering that's most of his points he's got already. Next up we have the only player in here that I've picked, or one of the only players, is Lauren Koscielny. He had a fantastic game, picks it off a goal, probably unlucky to not get the um, clean sheet. Um, it was a deflected goal from Ross Barkley, who I had on my bench, I'm so annoyed. I could have had Berahino go out. I could have had uh, maybe Sanchez even go out. But what will be, will be. He picked up two bonus points, though, for his troubles and had a decent game in general. I was considering putting Bellerin in for that game, and I'm quite glad I didn't. Let's put it that way. Moving on now to the last defender. We have another Jones up there. Now, the difference is in looking at Jones and McCauley and Fuchs, also Cabal up there. Not putting Cabal in because I've already had um, a Sunderland defender in. Oh, no, they did very well. He did pick up an assist, though, um, which is quite cool to see, but no bonus points. Um, but I do like a goal-scoring defender, nonetheless. Fuchs had a good game, picked up three bonus points again. Could that be the start of a new thing for him? He's picked himself up good performances and also started the last three in a Tinker Man's um, last three games. You also got McCauley, had a fantastic game, three bonus points for the troubles, and also Phil Jones. I think you've got to say, for me, Phil Jones in there as the third best defender this week, simply for the fact you, you nullify Manchester City, even without Aguero and Silva. They destroyed, uh, they've scored loads of goals, and to nullify players like Boney, like Sterling, like um, De Bruyne as well, and also Yaya Toure like that, you know, take some defending and credit to him. I'm surprised Rojo didn't get any bonus points, but again, the bonus point system works how it does, but Rojo and Jones definitely were standout performances in that game. Whilst I burp. Moving on to midfielders, a surprise mention for a Watford midfielder in the only midfielder to get above 10 points. Alman Abdi is up now. 
is a huge surprise because bit of 11 points, you know, got a goal scored, got three most points, got a clean sheet as well. Played 77 minutes, so it did come off in Watford's um, fantastic 2 0 win away from Stoke. Stoke are slumping a bit, I have to admit. Um, if they could start winning, they could be taken away from the relegation troubles and then it just leaves five teams in there for the rest of the season for me. But he had a fantastic game and basically dictated the game, if you want to say that, in the 2 um, 0 win they had against Stoke. Moving on to second player. It should decide itself, midfielder. It's a Moussa Dembele. He's put himself up a goal, also two bonus points. Didn't play most of the game. The reason he's in there because he got nine points. Puts him basically deep up by everyone else. But he had a good game. Grabbed himself a goal. You know, obviously five one, quite a um, huge scoreline. Even um, by um, I've lost my word. Spurs' standards. That's what I was going for. And lastly, back with a bang again. Um, Andre Ayew. Um, picked himself up a goal in the 2-1 win against Villa, which gave them the win, and also sacked Tim Sherwood, which I do not agree with before you ask. And now, lastly, on all mentions, of course, Sigurdsson was back. He had a nice game indeed. Grabbed himself up another goal. However, the yellow card did mean he was no longer on nine. You also got Matt Ritchie scored in the first few seconds for Bournemouth. You also got Adam Johnson. He's not going to make it in there at all, even if he grabbed about 20 points. First simple fact, you, you can guess. I don't need to say it. And lastly, we have forwards, in which it's obvious who's the best forward this week, Fletcher. I'm only joking, um, I'm not a very funny person. We have Harry Kane, he picks himself up a hat-trick against Bournemouth. Looking at you thinking, oh, well, obviously, in a hat-trick against Bournemouth, it's nothing much. Bournemouth are higher than Newcastle, Guerra got five against Newcastle, Sterling and Boney perform well against Bournemouth for Manchester City. You know, and you look at it thinking, oh, but they rated Boney after that. They thought it was really good. Rated Sterling said he's finally arrived. Rated Aguero saying world class. Kane, of course, he's a one season wonder in everyone's eyes. They just um, decided to say it wasn't that good. However, I disagree. I think it's a fantastic feat for him. Grabbing a hat trick and hopefully can kickstart his season. Grab himself up three bonus points as well. Didn't play the whole game, obviously, because five one up, you don't need to. But had a very good game indeed. Next up was Stephen Fletcher. He had a very good game. Grabbed himself up an assist, I believe, for the penalty scored by Adam Johnson. And grabbed himself a goal as well. Got one bonus point, as well, which was, again, I saw a bit strange because he had a goal and assist. I thought, obviously, he was going to get three. Only got one. So strange nonetheless. And then, we had a choice between Ayu of Aston Villa and Zarate. My pick is Mauro Zarate for the simple reason that I believe he did had a better game. I was calling it Aston Villa. Or scoring against Chelsea. For me, it's got to be Chelsea. Um, and he had a fantastic... It's, it's the first time he scored, actually, since he played against Arsenal. Look at that, I'm thinking, you know, you've played against two big London clubs and you scored against two big London clubs. That's the only two goals you've done this season. Roll on the other big London clubs. Roll on Tottenham. Now, let's get this started for Mara Zarate, because that's the only games he seems to score in. But... A good week, nonetheless, of course, players like Ben Teke were back, Rondon was back, and also Ayu, nonetheless, for honourable mentions. But thank you guys for watching, and nevertheless, if you have liked this video, then leave a like. Then what you think about the selection in the comments down below, and also who you think had a very good game week. So of course, you can take out people like Carroll, who, of course, wasn't on the pitch for the whole game, but, of course, had a great impact in it, and things like that. But thank you guys for watching, nonetheless, and peace.